Okay, hello everybody. Uh, we'll get started in just a moment. If you can hear me, please uh, type a Y or a yes in the chat. Awesome. All right, so um, I hope everybody's doing great. I, uh, I got a lot, a lot of charts from a few students uh, that are applying uh, the, the secret divergence. Um, mostly, uh, you know, mostly are succeeding, uh, but there are a few things that we can discuss, you know, just to make the trading better. But first we're gonna start here today um, with the gold setup that we had. We're gonna take a look at what gold is doing right now. Does anybody, um, is anybody in a gold trade? All right, so remember last uh, webinar, I said what we wanna do in order to identify what the trend is, uh, is look at the previous, just a second guys, cause I'm also trading here. So what we wanna do is look at the previous divergence. Does anybody know on gold and silver when the previous divergence was? I know some of you sent me a screenshot. Just a second, guys. Thirteenth of April. Yes, exactly. On the thirteenth of April, we had divergence between gold and silver, and we're going to take a look right now. <clears throat> Okay, perfect. So on April 13th, let's go take a look. We had gold and silver make a high. So first thing we want to take a look at is that they made the high at the same time. Oh, sorry, buddy. You're right. Okay. So on April 13th, we want to make sure that both assets made a high at the same time. So they did, and we're going to run our... Uh, resistance level here and on silver it was over here okay this is a very good example of divergence uh, because as i mentioned last time we had price holding for a while above the level while gold held below the level so this uh, this was a, a very good example of divergence. So an aggressive entry, like we spoke about, would have been uh, the first close above this level here. So that was 4 a.m. Uh, my local time here. So that was your entry. And then your stop would go above the high. Right. And we've been coming down. Uh, we've been coming down since. Okay, um, now, more recently, if you follow me on Instagram, so I had this position uh, that I took, and I'm actually out of it um, as we halted here. Uh, so we're going to take a look and see what gold will do now. Uh, but I did have a position running from a divergence uh, yesterday. So this one's a little tricky, and it's more about understanding, you know, what what's the story of price, right? It's not, we don't wanna be so rigid and say, oh, price is gonna follow rules. Price is mostly telling you a story and it's giving you information. Um, and if you can analyze that information properly and you see that information occur over and over and over again, you're gonna be able to make a better decision. So for example, I'm sure most of you were watching this level yesterday. Okay, now when we first had divergence, so price was, where are these arrows here? Price was here. That was the first time.
Okay, now what's the problem here? Look at all the distance that we had all the way up. Right, so that's, um, that's gonna reduce your risk to reward greatly because you're gonna have to put your stop above the divergent high. Uh, so what I said in the last webinar is when you see that, try and wait for the other asset to catch up. So you wanna let the other asset to catch up. And then if this holds, which it did, right? Remember we talked about sections of the market. So we had a rush up, okay? And then price halted and, and held. Now, if you notice the feed that I had, and I looked on a lot of different feeds, they, it popped up by, you know, a dollar or two. And that might have put many people off, but you have to understand it's still divergence. The market's not perfect, right? Nature, nature isn't perfect. There's always going to be these little nuances that, you know, you have to pay attention to. But what's the story? The story is that silver kept getting pushed above that level, right? No problem. And even almost made it to that next, uh, that next high over here where gold just kept getting pushed down and made a, a lower high, right? So that would tell us that gold is ready to drop. So as soon as we, you know, maybe break a swing here or any other confluences that you've learned from me, at least, uh, you could have taken this short up here. So now that we had a final rush, right? So let's look at the, let's break down the sections here. So that was the divergent high. Okay, so then price rushed. And then quick V back up. And then we went into a halting period and created divergence. And now price has rushed. So what we could do now is go to the lower time frame and see what's going on over there. So let's go down to the five minute. Okay, so what do you see? Does anybody see anything? Right, so give me... Right, so we have divergence here. Do we have divergence up or down? Adam, and yeah, okay, divergence. Okay, Trevor, why divergence up? Tommy, okay, why up? Okay, so everybody's saying up. So first we actually had divergence down right here. Okay. And price um, actually made, uh, made it's, it's, you know, halting over here. So what do we see? We see gold is below this and go and um, silver is above the level. Okay, but this doesn't mean that we, okay, that we, we can take this divergent short because there, you guys saw something up. So let's go take a look at what we see. So we'll go back to the one hour. And if we take this low, Oh, guys, look, didn't happen at the same time. Okay, so it, we're in still in tune. We're still in tune with um, the divergent short. But because we're halting here, the divergence down was not at the same time. Let's go take a look at them. No, divergence down is right now. Divergence down is right now. And if this high gets crossed, right, take a look. Oh, you're right. Wait a minute. Mm 
Yeah, that didn't make it at the same time. Okay, we have a sneaky divergence up. Good eye. Maybe this is what you guys uh, see. Okay, 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 okay. So we have a low here at four, uh, 1420, my local time. We're going to run our level to the right. Say 1425. Also made a low here. 1425. Okay, very nice. So price pushed up, and we actually crossed this high right here. And here we stayed. Okay, then we pushed down. We broke the low broke the uh, so now that becomes a divergent low and now we have a divergence up okay so it's trading a five minute divergence against a one hour is risky uh but you know it looks it looks good it's a valid trade uh, especially after we rushed this morning so uh, what could we do now in order to enter long so you Aggressive entry is long right here with a stop right below the divergent low. And then what I would do is just target the next high because that's usually what they're going to do. They're going to go take out the next high. So that's what I would target here. And then what we would have to look is can gold get to that high at the same time why is that important for our long position right why would that be important because if yeah if gold if gold doesn't make it higher as silver gets higher, well, then we're just going to have another divergence coming down again, right? But uh, as I mentioned, this is a very good time for divergence. We had something setting up into New York. We're going to get volume in a minute, and it will be very interesting to see where gold head heads next. Otherwise, we diverge again. Exactly, Fabian, exactly. Okay, so that's gold and silver. Um, can we look at the 9 a.m. high? No, Solomon. Okay, so... Let's move on. Talked about uh, exactly what I wanted to talk about on gold. So let's move and silver. So let's move on here to the S&P. I know uh, some of you caught this as well. Um, so here we go. Tuesday, April 18th, 8 p.m. My local time. Or let's see a better one here. Perfect. Okay, so around 9 or 10, we made a high over here on the S&P as well as the Dow. We're going to run our resistance zone over. Okay, and then we see that we had divergence right here. So as soon as price went above, right? I do like if price would to, like were to close above, I would like it a lot more. Uh, but this is valid, absolutely valid. And then your aggressive entry would be here, and a more conservative entry would be probably here. And that is because we are crossing the swing. Okay. So that is that, but we actually had um, divergence happen here as well. So this is a good sign. If you see divergence happening across the market, uh, that's, that's going to be a big confluence uh, for your trades. So let's take a look here at the lower time frame.
All right, so price uh, makes a low here together around 1040. And on the Dow, we were higher as the S&P broke, broke that level. So we have a divergence up. And now a uh, good sign for this trade, let's say if you were in, right? So the aggressive entry would probably be here. Somewhere here. And then what I would have done if you want to be more conservative is just let price make a minor swing. So if the confirmation was here, you know, let price make a minor swing, come back down, and then break that swing, proving that the trend uh, could indeed change. Okay, so that's a conservative approach. And so we've had two, uh, two possible opportunities today. The Dow is well into profit. Did anybody take this Dow trade? By the way, I didn't even see it. Uh, on the daily chart, we see bearish divergence as well. Where? What, uh, on the S&P or on gold? Let's see, daily. Um, yeah, it's because it reached this level, but what's, what I think is going to happen right now is it's going to come up and cross this. If this is the level you were talking about, uh, just because we didn't really get over it, I, I would, I would have loved, let's say it closed just like that over while this stayed all the way down here. That's pretty much what we saw with this low, this low and this low. Um, and then you'd want it to hold there. So this has a high probability now of coming out, taking this high. If we saw divergence on the lower time frame. Awesome. Uh, any other questions on the S&P, on gold, what we looked at so far? All right. So now what we're going to do is take a look uh, at some example charts that I've gotten from some students. So I'm going to give you guys a range of examples um, ranging from exactly what I expect and what you should expect from yourself in order to grow and actually succeed. And just what I see in traders that end up, you know, not succeeding. So first we're going to start with what you should be doing. And for that, it's just a second. Okay, so I stress to my students that they need to be journaling uh, their trades because in six months from now, you're not going to understand what you did, and you're going to want to go back and look over everything. Also, when you're journaling the actual trade, you'll notice that certain thoughts will come up. Certain thoughts will come up that you know may give you an indication about a certain situation that you see over and over and over again. But if you're not journaling properly and you're not making notes, then how are you going to be able to, you know, find a situation that is happening over and over again. A lot of trading is done in nuances, you know, on it's, it's, if, as soon as you start putting rules and your faith into rules and say, every time this happens, I'm going to enter. And every time this happens, I'm going to exit. That's a sure way to end up break even or in a loss. So this student right here caught divergence between a Euro dollar and the dollar index. So we can see that uh, a high was made at, made at the same time. Price came up, crossed the level on the Dow, okay? And down we went. Uh, again, higher probability over here would, would be uh, if price actually closed above the level. That would be much better, but definitely valid and a great trade. 
Um, over here as well, we have Euro, Dollar, and Dollar Swiss. So if you're new to Divergence and new to Forex, so Dollar Swiss is actually inverted. And this student just um, uh, basically put it the same way as Euro through TradingView that allows you to do that so that you can see the divergence is easier. Just a note to make note if you're going to look for divergence in Dollar Swiss. So here we have a high that was created at the New York Open. And then we pushed up and broke in London. And then as we broke on Euro dollar, dollar Swiss didn't. And that was the divergence right there. Down we went. Uh, beautiful trade. Okay, so here, all these divergences are valid. Uh, but, you know, they're very sneaky. The only one I would say, uh, I don't know what happened here. We got to go see what happened here. I think we came down. Oh, we rushed down. If I remember correctly, Euro dollar, that was yesterday. We rushed down and then we popped right back up. So uh, the divergence that, yeah, big news candle down, exactly. So the divergence that I like here is right here when price kind of closes below the level twice and then we hold um, right here and then head up. And then you could have taken up that all the way up quick time, right? You had one, two, three hours. You were already up at the highest. You could have taken nice profits there and your stop would just be below uh, the divergent low here. Okay, so here we have a high pre London. Or sorry, that's after London open and then, or just right at it. And then price crosses on the dollar index and euro doesn't and down we went exit on the news yeah if we had a rejection like that i would also just you know just take there's no point in being greedy great trade uh over here we have silver and gold so silver breaks the low and gold does it and you can see gold took off like that Next example here, uh, S&P 500 with the Dow. So the S&P breaks the high, the Dow doesn't, and Dow, down it went. Okay, so here was, I think the student got stopped out. Yeah, that's the result. That, okay, Fabian. From the okay, 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 perfect. So what? Oh, Fabian, you're you're so Fabian's in the master course, and anybody even in the square of nine course should know. So I'm going to actually start uh, teaching the divergent students this as well. So we'll just enter it right now. We got oh di bigger divergence on the on like oh, okay, 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 okay. But either way, uh, we're coming here to a triple bottom. Right, so you're you're entering short on a triple bottom, and those who know the mechanical method or have studied GAN, um, we know that triple bottoms are strong points of uh, support or resistance. Triple tops, triple bottoms. So I wouldn't have gotten in uh, here at this triple bottom. Okay, uh, ba -ba -ba. New York. Oh, here we go. S and P five hundred and the Dow. The Dow breaks the low. S and P doesn't, and up we go. And I think then we made another divergence here and came down. Okay, perfect. So this is a perfect example of journaling. Uh, this particular student I know is doing very well. Um, you know, I. Each student to their own time takes their own, but this student in particular, you know, very proud of him. He took, he took, he took his time and he didn't give up and he pushed right through and now he's uh, trading successfully. So at the end of the day, guys, it's all up to you. Um, let's take a look here. Okay, so Solomon Solomon says there was a few good examples of divergence on the chart. Okay, there's a question on the last page. I think it's valid. Okay, one second. Yep. 
is this valid even though the divergence is from a different day? Absolutely. Divergence um, it can be valid across months, you know, even on the daily time frame. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, when the actual high or low was created. So, yeah, good question. Okay, so then there's another, uh, you know, type of chart or journaling that I'm getting. And, you know, it's just charts. You know, how how's this? How's this entry? How's this? What I, you know, like just questions and, and, and showing me, you know, I have to understand what's going on. So, yes, it's a good example of dollar Swiss. Uh, but, you know, add a paragraph or, you know, not a paragraph, just a couple words, what's going on here, what you expect, what you, what you were looking at. Okay. And that, that's for you. That's not for me. It doesn't, I, I can see it right away, but later on, you're going to want to, um, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, you're going to want to label it better. You're going to, the better you journal, uh, the quicker you'll learn, you'll learn. It's just that simple. Now, if you find yourself not being able to journal, so you should ask yourself, well, do you really know what you're doing? Because if you can't take your actions and put them into words on a page, then chances are you have no idea what your actions are or where they're coming from. Uh, let's take a look at another example. Okay, so this particular student has been with me for a while. Uh, he's doing great. And I, if you hear me and you know it's yours, uh, you know you want to add, you want to, you want to journal this properly with, um, you know, with a few notes, just like I mentioned. But here the divergence is great. It's a really good setup. We're on the one hour time frame, um, and we already went over this trade. But basically, we had the high broken on the S and P, the Dow it didn't, uh, and down we went. Very nice. What else we got here? Okay, so here, uh, this student caught that gold move down that we uh, talked about. So you guys see divergence. It's not, it's not left to interpretation, right? It's not something that you have to guess like many, you know, many methods. You can be like, oh, well, it could be this, but it could be this. And then you end up having no edge whatsoever. Notice how we're all seeing the same things. Okay. It's the footprints of the market maker. We've learned how to see the footprints. Now it's all about, um, you know, making the proper decisions. And one decision you, you know, that I find second. So for example, I don't want to see this guys. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see four minute charts. Okay. On I don't know what MYM or MES or the, okay, so this, I, I can see it's a Dow. Okay, so it's a Dow contract and the S&P contract, four minutes, I don't wanna see it. I don't wanna see it at times that there shouldn't be divergence. Okay, this I definitely don't wanna see. If I see these charts, you just, you guys won't get any answers because I talked about it thoroughly. So um, a one minute chart, why? You know, that's like, that's like, uh, let's say, you, let's say you're a CEO, right? You guys got to act the part. If you want to make money in the market, you know, it's very simple. You have to act the part, you know, and I've talked about it with many of my students that you want to, you, you, you want to act like a CEO of a multi-million dollar company that's making multi-million dollar deals because you can make multi-million dollar deals, you know, in Forex or in, in any asset in trading. It's, it's as long as you treat it like a business. And so asking the one minute chart for advice is just proving that you want to, you're just, you want to trade, you want to see, you want to, you want to see the situation and trade it. It doesn't matter how much confluence it has or the probability that it's going to happen. And this particular student, I spoke, you know, he's, I spoke to him almost a year ago about it. Um, and it seems like he just ignored my advice. So I'm not going to answer if I get charts like this. One minute charts. Also contracts and mini contracts. Divergence between a contract and its mini contract. Don't, they, I don't know. Maybe. Test it. But I'm not going to give you my opinion on it. Uh, if you want my opinion on, on setups, it's got to be things that I'm teaching. And that's exactly why I'm doing these webinars. Um, 
Okay, so let's go take a look at how gold is doing. And silver. Did anybody take this? Anybody take this trade? I think that we're going to fly up here and test these highs. All right. Um, if you guys have charts or anything you want to ask me, anything you want to go over, now's the time. Uh, we've pretty much gone over anything. I didn't look over oil. I didn't see anything in oil. Uh, if someone did, just let me know. We could go over it. Uh, okay, so I have a question in the last webinar. You mentioned a chart that you want to see the volume of the open create the divergence. Are are these the highest probability? Exactly, exactly, Fabian. So you've had trades that worked outside that time. Uh, but just, you know, trading gold, trading the S&P, trading the Dow, uh, a higher probability definitely going to be towards the New York session. But I saw you had a couple of trades of euro, dollar, dollar, Swiss. So Forex, that makes sense that in the, you know, from Asia, because we talked about overnight banking, uh, right? A lot of, you know, understand that, you know, banks make their moves overnight. We have overnight lending uh, to cover their balances. And you've seen an example here, you know, with some bank failures uh, recently. So that's because they don't really have cash on hand, right? It's all assets. It's all, it's all digital. It's all on the computer. But according to regulations, you need a certain amount of, cash stores or you know liquidity overnight uh, just to be just not to be fined basically and so banks will lend each other money at specific rates and we're talking you know not small amounts of money and that's what's uh, going to create uh, asian movement you know the asian session movement of forex pairs um, and so it makes sense that coming out of asia if we have divergence into london then you know that's going to make a move but Seeing it with the S and P or the Dow, may, uh, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't trade that. Uh, will you shoot me if I I don't shoot anybody? To check Nifty and Bank Nifty, why not? We have time, guys. If I'm being hard on you, trust me, I'm hard a lot harder on myself, and that's just what's required, right? This isn't this is ruthless here. Okay, uh, one one by one. Let's go to Nifty. Now I haven't tested this, but I know you've been sending me. So let's take a look. Thank Nifty. So beautiful divergence we actually had right here. Um, and it seems like we are still coming down off that. So that's what I see on Nifty and Bank Nifty. So now we would, yeah, we made a low here. Run our support zone. And if we get divergence here, then that would uh, set us up for a long position. Okay. So good question. Uh, dollar Swiss or, or the dollar index, which one do you find more reliable? Honestly, it's hard to say. Sometimes it seems like dollar Swiss is more reliable. Sometimes it seems like the dollar index is more reliable. The trading, you know, then the market's like seasons. So it's something that you're going to have to pay attention to. And if you see, you know, two dollar Swiss trades uh, lose in a row, but you had three winners of dollar index. So just keep with dollar index until you have a loss in the dollar index, right? And then you start, and then if you start seeing dollar Swiss working better then switch over back to dollar Swiss. Uh, that's what I, that's what I used to do.
Any more questions? Yeah, no problem. How far back do you go with back testing? Um, you don't need to back test. You should live test. Uh, but uh, I don't know. It depends on your, uh, you know, on your uh, feed. I know that the trading view doesn't have much of the dollar index, but there's nothing like live testing, testing forward. It, back testing is uh, it doesn't it doesn't really work because I'm I'm sure most of you have back tested things, um, and it seems like it works great. And maybe even there's like this analyzer that checks you know the probability of your profit factor and if you have a certain amount of capital, and then you go and trade it, and it's nothing like um, back testing. And that's because, uh, like I spoke, like I just said, market works in seasons, and the market. It's not that it's out to get you. It's just built in a way that's very hard for a human to comprehend based on the tools that we've been given here by our brain. It's just counterintuitive. That's why Gan says that price, when it looks the strongest, is actually you know, most likely the weakest. Because the way price moves and what in, in relation to what it's going to do next is very counterintuitive. And that's why we have to have these tools like divergence to get the information uh, from the market. Uh, but you see, there's a lot of waiting around, a lot of being patient, you know, and going down to the smaller time frame is not a solution to waiting around. You know, also if you have a day job, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Like it's uh, the market doesn't care when when you have the time to sit, um, you know, sit at the at the computer. I saw your USD short sharp usually come and cover short news. You saw you saw divergence on Euro and, and dollar Swiss, Trevor. Um, I don't understand what you're asking, Trevor. <laughs> Trevor likes to give me half thoughts and makes me guess his questions. Oh, cover short, cover short on new. Oh, okay, the, the student covered short on new. So that is I am right there. That's all. You know, that student felt like that was the right thing to do. Um, you know, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, I just have a recent YouTube video where I put, where I explain uh, what Gan, not what my interpretation is, but what Gan says, you know, we, who we meet through the air, we meet the Lord. And Gan wrote a whole book on that, The Magic Word, where he discusses the magic word Jehovah and what I am is. And, you know, I think that's a testament to him finally understanding what, what, what's required uh, in order to succeed, you know, because I bet you that, you know, gone looking around would see how, well, how come people can't do it like I do? Right? How come people can't succeed as well as I do? And I think that's maybe one of the reasons why, you know, some may say gone has a bad rap. You know, I had one comment, someone said, I bet you don't trade uh, and uh, you're going to die penniless or everyone. Oh, what do you say? Everyone, I, every gun trader I met, has got has died penniless and broke or something like that so you can ask my students you know the students that have been with me for the last while how many trades i've called in front of them how many trades i've helped them call how many are passing uh, challenges how many are profitable uh it's it's all up to them what, what's the proof because every student gets the same knowledge so why do only a few succeed right so is it the knowledge or is it the person? So that's the that goes back to to the to the question that Trevor was asking. This particular student saw that he had a very nice amount of profit, and yes, price could go down. But he looked within and he said, "I'm comfortable taking my profits now, and that's it." So at the end of the day, all of Gan's methods are just giving us information. We want to take the information inside. We want to look within. We, you know, we want to calm our nerves. We want to understand our motivations. I bet you if you, you know, analyze your motivations when you get in a trade, you'll kind of laugh at yourself. 
you know, why are you rushing? Why? What, what, you know, if it's to pay bills, you'll never succeed. Trading can't be poked and prodded to move forward. It just doesn't work like that. It's got to come naturally. It's going to come at a time that matches your vibration, right? Gan talks about that as well. A season to no to trading. Gan had his Saturn return and he knew that, you know, it's, time, it's a good time to start trading. And he talks about how he has seasons uh, in his life where he understands what time to trade and what time not to trade. And that's why he had trading campaigns. Right. He didn't he didn't day trade. Gun wasn't a day trader. He had trading campaigns where he saw an opportunity and he just took advantage for a certain amount of time and understood when to stop. So we have to do the same thing. And that's what that student did. Well, he understood when he needed to stop, said news. No, no, thank you. Especially I saw that pin bar. I would have been out, too. Any other questions? How's gold doing gold and silver? So I'll share with you guys just because um, uh, let's remove everything just because my margin uh, from my broker and the spread on silver is terrible and I understand gold's movement a lot better. So I'll look at the divergence on silver, but I'll use other confluences as well to get in on gold. Um, so that's why I keep asking what's going on with gold. But yes, the setup was on silver. Ooh, very nice. So just like we said, uh, price is making its way up to these highs. And I don't, you know, don't think that if price doesn't make it while silver makes it, that it's just going to stay there, right? What do we want next if price goes past here? Remember that happened over here as well. Right, we want to let price catch up and then go into a holding and a halting pattern. Then we want to solve the halting pattern using divergence, right? And then understand. So if we if if uh, silver stayed up above like this, And then as gold breaks a swing and silver comes back down below the level, then I would, uh, I would say that's divergent. So a lot has to happen, right? For um, we would be looking at this short. So right now, whoever's long, congratulations. I think this is going to head up very nicely. Oh, we have news in one minute. I've totally forgot. So those, you know, those have to look within. Are, if you're in profits, are you going to close right now? Are you going to move to break even? Are you going to let it be? Everybody now has the same information. We're all looking at the screen. We all have the same information. But the way that information is interpreted and comprehended and then applied back into the 3D reality, right, is totally dependent on your I am. So you have, so I am Sean, right? But you, you know, you have, Everybody in this uh, in this chat, right in this in this webinar, has a different IM based on subconscious programs. And Gan talks about that uh, in the magic word. So let's see what happens now. What news we have? Uh, yeah, we had a packed news day. So we have flash manufacturing PMI. Let's see what that does. Oh, so we had a push back down would you consider divergence happening right now which divergence all in Take a look at this. Ooh, look at that candle. Look at that candle. Silver has taken out the highs. No, it hasn't. What are you talking about? 
Solomon, this is what I'm, this is what I'm saying. Take a second look. The highs are here. We just, we just looked over them. Here's the high. Here's the high. Where's the divergence? But why, but why would you take that high? That's not a high. That's just a, you know, a minor swing or a pivot, whatever you want to call it. This is a high. Zoom out. That's a high. That's a low. That's a high. That's a low. Okay. That's what you want to be looking at. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, everybody go quiet now. We're, now we're after the news. Divergence is still valid. Nothing happened here. Nothing changed. Um, maybe possibly come back down, cross a low and then go up, but, um, nothing's been invalidated here. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, would you look at highs past? Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter as long as it's a, it's a high that was made at the same time as the other pair. No problem. All right. So that's going to be it for me today. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, so we'll be here back same time next week, uh, either Thursday or Friday. Uh, and I'm interested to know what you guys did. So if you guys, you know, privately want to send me, um, send me an email with a chart, what you did and how you did it. And then we can kind of move forward with, you know, with next time, how we can do better um, and what you did good. Uh, so I, that would be my pleasure. All right, guys. So take care and have a great weekend.